hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is blessing ogaba of bellwing creations today i'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful bolero jacket all right um it also comes in different variations you can make yours straight like it is in this picture you can also decide to make yours to be curved like this i mean the center front to be this curvy or like this either way you want it it's your call so in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how you can make either of this bolero designs with this high built-up collar alright so please if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe give us a thumbs up share our videos and of course give us a comment on what you think I would like to see yours also so let's go into the training right about now so guys I've gone ahead to mark out my lines respectively that is my shoulder line armhole line bust line on the bust line and waistline respectively and i give a uh, one inch allowance under the waistline for same allowance and on my shoulder line i gave a whooping three inches for the upper part that is to enable me cover up my neckline respectively so first of all i'm going to mark out my armhole point that point there is about eight inches that will help me cover up my armhole and then i'll come down by half of an inch there to slant the shoulder because this is a, a high neck, a short collar, so I'm going to be using about um, two and a half inches from the center front on my shoulder line for my neck parts. Okay, and then from that two and a half inches point there that I just marked, okay, from the center front inwards on my shoulder line there, I'm going to still mark out another two and a half inches upwards. You might want to make yours three inches. Okay, but for me, two and a half inches is okay. So I'm going to square that up. Okay, this is a different style of neckline. Okay, it's a short collar. So you have to do this. So on the shoulder line, you mark two and a half inches inwards. And from that point, you also mark two and a half inches upwards and then square it using your ruler. Just the same way I'm doing now to have like a box shape. That is what is going to help your collar to be the way it is that's how you achieve your show color okay so from there i'm going to um draw a straight line going to that half inch at the armhole side that i marked earlier that i dropped earlier to slant the shoulder okay so that will now give me my shoulder line okay so and then i'm going to mark out my across chest um that is about six inches that was from the shoulder line and then i'm going to be using my armhole curve you can use your hand and then to cover out my armhole as it's supposed to be so you just want to do this the normal way you do your armhole it's very simple and easy so after which i'll go ahead and mark out my um, bust pan to um, cover my darts okay so you want to do that and i enjoy closing my darts on the block okay so i'm just going to carve out my darts and then close it on the block this is a normal straight um darts that i'm doing so you just want to do your darts the way you you usually do it that works for you and that one will be for the bodies and i'm also going to be um doing my armhole darts like i'm doing here if you're familiar with my videos i always do this a lot and then using my tape i'm going to be closing uh, my darts on the block both my body's darts and my armhole darts like you see in the picture <laughs> So because of the armhole that I just closed it, that distorted my armhole line, so I'm just going to retrace that properly using my curve 
and then the next thing I want to do is to mark out my shape my bust circumference divided by four on my bust line and then add about um, one and a half or two inches allowance as you may add yours as the same fit do the same thing for my under bust circumference on the under bust line and of course the waist as well adding make sure you add your seam allowance if you're used to that or, or you may just want to um, cut it exactly on your shape and then add your seam allowance when you're transferring to your fabric but i do add my seam allowances on the block on my paper here so that not to take any chances so then i go ahead and um, shape out the front part okay on my bust line then i'm going in by half inch and on the under bust line i'm going in by one inch you may want to increase yours on the under bust depending on how revealing you want your front part of your jacket to be and then um I'm just going to go straight down like um, three quarter of an inch or still one inch of the waistline there to give me that slick curve I have in the front and I'm just going to blend the curve there on the under bust, bust part there okay so you know it's an open front jacket so I'm just trying to create the curve and then I'll go out and cut out uh, my markings you can see I hope you can see this clearly the curve I just made on the center front there so that the front part of my jacket is not just going to be looking very straight and then I'll just go ahead and cut out on my border lines as you can see me doing in this video and then I'm going to bring out my entire front piece and then um, I'm going to show you another alteration you may want to make depending on your choice of style this is really not that um difficult this is a very 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 um simple simple style to make okay the only difference is just the center front that is on the curved part and of course the neckline on the shoulder part you can see how different it looks and you can see how my shape is coming out very well because of the that i close is giving already giving in my bust form there okay so you can see the the front part that i cut out of it already it's there so guys if you want the front part of your bolero jacket to be looking like what you have in the picture here you want it to have that curved effect and not the straight one like i have here you may want to do some alterations to this front part here after you're done with the entire front piece so what you're going to do is just to pick up your curve or whatever you use and then try to curve out the shape you want either from the bust part or the under bust part down to the shaping side at the waistline there like i'm doing in this picture okay so you just have to just curve it the way you want the the shape you want and then cut it out instead of using the previous um cut out that i just did or you might want to take up your uh, your curve right from the shoulder point there okay to give it another slick shape there is no uh, limit to the kind of shape you can give your front part of your bolero jacket so just do um what you wish okay you can say i'm trying to make my curvy a more steep and more curvy okay so i'm just trying to uh, make sure that i get a perfect cut out um shape there a curve using my um, whole curve there and i think i uh, i like this i'm going to be going with this if i were to make a curved front of my bolero jacket okay so you want to do this after you are done with the entire front but this when you are done with it then you come and give it that curve ensure that the side of the curve is exactly the same line so that it will align well with the back part okay and that's it you just have to cut it out so now let's go ahead and cut out the back pattern now um i'm going to be using uh the back side is going to be on an open edge a selvage edge i'm going to be joining it like i'll be i would have done um using my zipper so um I, but actually there is no need of me giving any zipper allowance i'm just going to be using half of an inch to my allowance to close the zipper line and i'll be doing that when i'm transferring my pattern to my fabric so i want to go ahead and then mark out my shoulder line and then carve my armhole like i would my normal clothes or fabric okay so you just cut out your armhole the normal way and then um for the neck width okay remember your front piece there for the shooting up of your 
um, shoulder of your, your neck that we use three inches okay so you want to make sure that your neck width also for the back is three inches anything less or longer than that will not fit in when you're joining your back bodies to your front body so you want to ensure that that is accurate and then you slant the remainder of your shoulder line to meet with your armhole point there just like i'm doing in this video and then i will go ahead and um, curve out my neckline very well using my curve but you want to ensure that that curve you just gave now is exactly three inches or at most three and a half for the joining okay then i'm just go ahead and do my that for my back piece and then do my shaping and then cut out the normal way we usually do you know the drill already so let's just get at it <laughs> So guys i'm done transferring and as you can see i gave half inch of a same allowance there on my back piece center back piece there okay so this is both my front and my front and um, back piece and i've gone ahead to iron stay on the upper front bodies of my front piece so as to give it a firm look to give my neckline a very firm look so you want to do the same on your fabric as well and then the next thing is to start joining i'm going to join that top patch there using half of an inch seam allowance okay so i want to draw a straight line there and then take it over to my sewing machine and then join it together after joining i'm going to flip it open as you can see i now have my front piece together joined on that spot there and i'm going to give it a good press okay give that seam a good press so that it will look neat and then i'm going to take my um, back piece and then join the center back piece from the neckline down to the full length line they're using half of an inch seam allowance so i've done that and i'm going to give that seam there a good press and as well and then transfer it to the front piece to to sew the neck part together now this part is very important that you take your time and watch very carefully so the center part there from the back is going to meet with the center part there in the front then i'm going to spread out the remaining parts by the sides there and pin it down the same thing to the other side you want to make sure that you follow the step thoroughly so that your neckline will come out smooth and slick and then i'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and then i'll show you guys how to sew it so using half of an inch seam allowance from one edge there okay so i'm going to sew it down to the other edge please be careful because um if you actually make a mistake on this part your neckline is not going to come out very smooth so you want to start on that point there and then stitch straight to the other points using half of an inch seam allowance okay so i'm just going to be sewing it straight down to the other edge
you just need to take your time on this very well so that you will not make any mistakes so i'm approaching the end there all right as you can see i'm just going to sew right a few steps and then pin down my needle to the fabric make sure that the needle is pinned down to the fabric and then adjust the back shoulder line to align with the front shoulder line as you can see me doing i and i lifted up my presser fit for this so in, in order to achieve this meanwhile my needle is pinned down inside okay so i'm have to go underneath and get, make sure that there's no fabric on the way there make sure that your fabric underneath is lying flat so that you don't have a bulge or a pleat at that point you want to make sure that you straighten out your fabric underneath and make sure that the front shoulder line and the back shoulder line is well aligned before sewing so um if you do that correctly this is what you'll be having you won't have any pleats or any um effect that you can see is laying now very flat and smooth at that point okay so you want to flip it to the other side and then sew the other side as well to give you the same effect so i'm going to move back step back a little and then sew it so that it will align very well so i saw a little step also and then when i reached that point there i i turn it so that the front shoulder line will align well with the back shoulder line so i pin down my needle and then raise up my presser fit and then pull the fabric to align the shoulders together you want to make sure that you you straighten out any other fabric underneath or upwards that's so that you do not have any pleats do not catch any fabric there make sure that your fabric have all given way so that your seam will come out sleek to come out smooth okay it won't come out messy so when once you've had that in place you go ahead and sew down to the edge of the armhole side please take your time to do this very well it's not that difficult it's very possible to achieve it as you can see i have achieved mine and as well this side is coming out smooth as well no pleats no gathers or anything there because I really made sure that my fabric underneath gave way. And this is the finished look as you can see. Yeah, you can see very smooth, very neat. Even without ironing, you can see it coming out very slick. And you can see the middle part there, it's meeting, okay? Because I pinned it down very well. So I have about two and a half inch left there. And that's high enough for me. If you want your neck a little bit higher, you want to increase the three inches that you gave on your block, maybe to four. But that would be too high anyway but the choice is yours so this is my entire body is complete so i'm going to give that angle part there a notch for ease okay after giving it a notch i'm going to um, go ahead and do the shaping so i'm going to place the front side on the back side and then confirm my measurements and then sh give it out to my actual shape remember i gave about um, one and a half inch seam allowance so that will be probably what i still have left to give for my shaping and yours may be different of course your own measurements is different from mine so i'm going ahead to mark out my seam line for my shaping and then take it over to my sewing machine and then sew out the line okay that's about one and a half inch there that i gave initially on my block so i'm having that as well so i've gone ahead to sew my shaping line and um my jacket is ready so i went ahead and did the same thing from start to finish to this point on my lining as well okay you want to turn that your jacket with the lining to give it a slick and fin and good look so i've gone ahead to sew cut out my pattern on my lining repeat the sewing step procedure everything and then i'll be attaching my lining to my real fabric so i'm going to be facing the good side of the lining to the good side of the fabric making sure that all the points meet okay all the stitches there meet as you can see then i'm going to pin it down all the way around okay from the beginning point down to the other point except for the full length line the hem inside there the lining is supposed to be shorter than the actual fabric so that by the time you put it on your lining will not be protruding outwards okay so your lining is supposed to be like 
one inch or 1.5 inch shorter than your actual fabric so that by the time you turn it up your lining will not be showing outside it will not be visible to the good face so i'm going to go ahead and then cut out my lining about an inch shorter than the actual fabric and then i'm going to be stitching that hemming line first before stitching the other part so i'll just go ahead and pin the other part and then cut my down part of my lining same allowance i have sewn the down part of my um lining to my jacket as you can see it's giving way so my lining is no lo longer going to be showing um outside of the good face of my fabric when i wear it so you want to achieve this exactly then i'm going to pin it and then sew using half of an inch allowance from one end round to the other end as well okay so that my jacket will come out neat and slick so i've done just that and i'm going to be turning this inside out using my armhole okay i've not attached my sleeve yet so i have um, the liberty to use my armhole to turn this inside out which i'm doing now so you want to ensure that every point there is is well shooting out it's shooting out well and this is what I have everything turned in neatly okay so you want to make sure that you achieve this and I'm going to go ahead and give it a good press and I'm going to be using my hemming gum to iron round the edges okay of the front line and the hemming line you want to use your hemming gum this is what the hemming gum looks like for those who doesn't know how what it looks like so you want to use a hemming gum to iron it so that the lining will not be will be in place okay so i've done that and i've also gone ahead to attach my beautiful sleeve here in case you want to know how to make the sleeve i have a separate video on that in my channel i'll include the link to the video of the sleeve in the description box and you, or you may want to check my channel for the video of that sleeve and this is my jacket looking slick for the armhole you can use your serger to weave that rough edge there or use your bias to pipe round the armhole to give it that neat and slick finishing so this is my bolero jacket how it's looking like very slick and unique and i went ahead to put um this chinese button in the front just to give it that finishing touch and um not to make it fly you may want to make yours fly but i gave it this finishing touch and as you can see the sleeve here is flowing like a peplum i use quinoline underneath it but if you want to see a detailed tutorial on the sleeve like i said earlier i have it in my channel here check the description box for the link and um thanks so guys for so much guys for watching please like my video share and subscribe i want to hear your thoughts on the comment section thanks so much till i come your way next time bye